All right, fellow AMC stockholders, X Max Trading here. Just want to go over some pretty, uh, pretty interesting DD about Citadel from a few years ago. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Keep the channel going and, and uh, keep the squeeze going, not financial advice. So let's get started. So from the Financial Times, how Ken Griffin rebuilt Citadel's ramparts. Chicago-based hedge fund manager has rebounded from the brink of collapse during the, during the last financial crisis. You'd think like hedge funds would know if it's coming along, you know, a financial crisis, but a lot of them didn't. Which is, I mean, I'm kind of surprised by that. It's my reaction to that. In the aftermath of the financial crisis, Citadel was on the brink of collapse. Many thought it was beyond rescue. Today, after navigating the market fallout from the coronavirus pandemic, the Chicago-based hedge fund has cemented its position as one of the industry's titans and one of its most prominent magnets for criticism. The change in fortunes marks a dramatic re rehabilitation engineered by the group's self-assured founder, Ken Griffin, who bragged in 2015 that Citadel manufactures money like an automaker manufactures cars. Uh, legally or illegally, because, you know, printing money like that is not common for hedge funds. So the fact that he can do them brags about it suggests something is nefarious. The firm's assets under management have more than tri trebled, more than tripled maybe, over the past decade to more than $34 billion in funds that trade everything from blue chip stocks to exotic debt and commodities, and has now been closed in new money for the past five years. The flagship fund, Wellington, returned 24.4% in 2020, more than twice the average hedge fund's gains, and is up 6% in the first three months of 2021. Citadel is now reached by investors, investor LCH Investments as the fourth highest grossing hedge fund in history, and Griffin's personal wealth is estimated at $16 billion. Last year's performance was in sharp contrast to Citadel's near death experience in 2008. Near death in 2008. We fired in all cylinders said Griffin in an interview, recalling how one of his investors recently compared the firm to an F-22 fighter jet. Uh, a lot of our other firms are fighting in the biplane, and in the moments of turbulence, they they got to retreat to safer ground. Now, this doesn't make sense, make us impervious, but makes but we made investments over decades to, to be more sure-footed in, 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 like, in moments like these. But said it also found itself, found itself subject of scrutiny and controversy this year. It played a prominent role in the GameStop uh, stock market mayhem when the army of retail investors on, on WSB to take on the hedge funds betting against the video game retailer noticed several meme stocks. Citadel stepped in with $2 billion cash injection to Melvin Capital, one of the biggest hedge funds burnt in the, in the tumult. Meanwhile, its sister company, Citadel Securities, which is the biggest market maker in U.S. stocks, was blamed by Redditors for, broker, for brokerage Robinhood decisions to curtail trading in GameStop at the height of the frenzy. While Griffin testified to Congress, neither, neither of his firms, firms played any role in Robert's decision to halt trading, debu debunking a public conspiracy theory by Reddit traders, which is, this is an old article, I mean, we found out recently the documents prove this. Democratic Congressman Rashid Tlaib captured the popular mood towards hedge funds when she fulminated against Griffin at the hearing, you are irresponsible and the market is set up in a way that helps only the wealthy. I kind of agree with that. Griffin brushes off, political, off the political opprobrium as grandstanding. He said he is convinced the incredibly positive impact of Citadel and Citadel Securities will shine through. I haven't thought of us as thought of us having emerged in this position as a populist boogeyman because much of what we do is so clearly constructed for capital markets and widely appreciated by regulators and policymakers around the world. Yeah, which which policymakers and regulators on on Capitol Hill, right? You know, Citadel has consistently has been consistently strong. Returns. Citadel's returns have been consistently strong apart from 2008. Yeah, that's a, that's a bummer right there. Well, except for 1994, right? That was a week. And then boom, boom. And then declining. Interesting. And then boom, boom. 2006 and 7. Collapse. 2008. Surge. 2009. That about evens it out. You know, this to this evens out to like a neutral and this is medi mediocre annual returns of 20% that's pretty high 35% hmm I, I wonder if you average this out you know what's the average like 10% maybe 
Cerro Lote is almost unrecognizable from the company started in 1990 when Griffin parlayed his dorm room hobby trading convertible bonds at Harvard University into a seed investment from, from investor Glenwood Capital. The fledgling firm made a name for itself by, re, by recording steady and strong returns, profiting from those misfortune, picking up the carcasses of rivals such as LTCN, Long-Term Capital Management, Management Amarath, Sowood, and Enron for distressed assets and trading talent. Then came 08. Citadel lost $8 billion that year and was forced to freeze investor withdrawals as the market plummeted. Investors and outsiders say Citadel's rebound from the financial crisis largely came down to three related factors. Swift adaptation to change the financial ecosystem, a business model that supports heavy investment in technology and talent, and Griffin's exacting demands. In 2008, financial crisis, regulators clamped down on banks' risk-taking and proprietary banks' trading desks that once resembled the vast internal hedge funds were just in. This allowed hedge funds such as Citadel to scoop up the best talent. The group's cost structure has boost, boosted its ability to do this. Citadel operates a multi-manager model where individual teams of traders and portfolio managers operate relatively autonomously. All costs, such as salaries, bonus, and technology investments, are passed directly on to investors in lieu of management in a lieu of management fee. Like Israel's Angler's Millennial Management and Michael Gellibrand's Exodus Fund, this is the enable Citadel to hire traders aggressively, knowing that cost is borne by investors, and call those quickly that perform badly. Yet even a sector known for ruthlessly firing underperforming traders, Griffin's reputation for a tough boss. There's not a lot of empathy, says a former employee. This could be an asset when things are crazy, as I don't think he feels the stress as, as, as the same way as everyone else does. There's a desire to do the best at everything, and everyone is either helping him accomplish that or not. Another former executive argued, argues that Griffin's relentlessness raises the bar. He will often pour over legal documents, bits of code, or analyst models, and if you know Ken, my look at your work, you double check. Ken is unapologetic with the firm's culture. If you're wired to enjoy being a good competitor, you'll love working here. Someone investing $100,000 at flagship fund Wellington's launch would have $19 million today. That was back 25 years ago. So if you had 10 k uh, what would that be a... Ten K you'd have like one point nine million. So hmm. Jeff Jack Woodruff, who left Citadel in twenty nineteen, set up his own hedge fund to describe Griffin as tough but fair and the firm as a Darwinian platform. If you do well you're rewarded. If you don't, you're fired. It's not a political place, it's capitalism in the purest form. Some investors have been deterred by the high cost of the pass through model, which often amounts to far more than a management fee of 1-2% to of assets that most hedge funds charge. But for others, its long-term returns net of all costs make it a softer investment. Citadel's waiting list of clients waiting to get in the fund running into tens of billions of dollars, according to a person close to the firm. This is despite some investors describe it as a fairly opaque business. It's a black box investment and very little transparency as one former investor whose money was returned. But our long-term returns are excellent and we are sorry to be redeemed. Citadel's heft has grown steadily despite being closed investors since 2015. Hedge fund, so total assets under management, AUM, steadily growing. There have been a lot of missteps along the way, most notably an, an aborted attempt at the financial crisis to build an investment bank, repeated flirtation with public listing that never materialized. More recently, critics say Citadel's aggressively, aggressively leveraged treasury trades only to be saved by the Federal Reserve's Extraordinary stimulus in March 2020. Some worry about the quiet influence on regulators and policymakers. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was paid about $800,000 for Citadel to give, firms, give the firm a series of speeches after stepping down as Fed chair in 2018. And Citadel retains former Ben Bernanke as an advisor. Citadel Securities hired several former SEC officials. Last week, snapped up uh, Heath Talbert, Tarbert, who recently headed the main derivatives regulator. Griffin's fortune has not appeared to dent his ambition. Hedge fund engineering is still balkanized compared to other, most other sectors. There are thousands of firms, and Citadel accounts for roughly 1% of the, the industry's total AOM, AUM. Once insider observes that Griffin sees every dollar that Citadel returns to investors as, as a defeat. Griffin sees every dollar that Citadel returns to investors as, as a defeat, as it only be funneled to a rival instead. Nevertheless, in a veal bar of his competitor, Citadel's founder is vehement he will not compromise on returns just to amass a bigger war chest. 
Instead, the hedge funds invest in areas like machine learning, corporate bond trading, and better data to steadily expand product productive capacity of its own various strategies over time. We are always trying to improve our ability to predict tomorrow, next week, next month, next quarter, next year, but I'd rather engage in the pursuit of excellence than the pursuit of assets. Hedge Fund Hall of Fame. Wow, this is amazing. Bridgewater, Ray Dalio, AUM, 101 billion. Net gains since, since inception, 46.5 billion. Hmm. Soros. Family office, that won't tell you. Huh. Net gains, 43 billion. Lone Pine, Stephen Mandel. Net gains more than AUM. Hmm. Citadel, yeah, fourth largest. D.E. Shaw, Viking, Millennium, Elliott Associates, Bow Post, Oach Ziff Sculptor, Farallon, Appaloosa, TCI, Tiger Global, SAC Capital 2, Capital 72, 0.72, Egerton, Breven Harvard, More Capital, Paulson and Company, John Paulson. King Street Capital. Wow. Pretty amazing, guys. All right, thanks for staying to the end of the video. We learned a lot. All right, till next time.